Welcome back everyone. Before we can put the boat back on the trailer post uh, the new gel coat, we need to get rid of these black rollers. They really mar up the coating, so we just spent all that work making a nice shiny white surface, and we wanna keep it that way. So instead of using these black rubber rollers that will mar up the surface, we're gonna be switching them out with these polyurethane Stoltz rollers. They're a little bit more expensive, but they'll keep the boat looking really nice. So we'll start getting to work on removing these black rollers and I'll show you guys the process for that as well as replacing them. Um, these side rollers are going to be a little bit different so we'll go ahead and remove them and then take a look at how we're going to install these on the side rollers. We'll have to cut them in half so it's going to be fun trying to find the right way to do it. Let's get into it. So these rollers are mounted on a steel shaft with these pal nuts at the end, which are just press fit onto the end of them. So in order to remove them, we're gonna take a pry bar and knock one of the sides off, and that's gonna allow us to pull that whole bolt out. Once we pull the bolt out, we'll go over to the vise and we'll have to hammer down on it to, to get these nuts to release off. Um, for this one, we're pretty much just gonna dig out this edge and pop the nut off with the pry bar. We're gonna keep working our way around on this guy right here. So, pry bar in. Ooh, that one is nice and easy. So, cap came off really nice. Once the cap's off, we can just press and slide the bolt out from the other way. And so these are trash now. Um, so you can see <clears throat> it's quite a bit of rust on both ends as well as in the middle. So once we get these nuts off both sides, we'll go ahead and sand this down with 800 grit and some water to make sure it's nice and smooth and then give it a quick rub down with some 3-in-1 oil to help uh, inhibit future corrosion. Right on the end here, there's that little tab and that tab is what holds it on. So once we can break that tab free on both sides, it'll pop right off. There we go. Pop. So you can see that tab right there and then there's one on the other side too. So that's what mechanically fastens these rollers to the post. All right. So Sweet. the first Both rollers came out. off really easily. I did have some that got stuck. So if they do get stuck, I just used a pry bar, but you could use really anything and just hammer it off. All right. So it's off. As you can see, hands are all black. That's all the stuff that gets on the boat. So that's what we're trying to get rid of. So that means now that we're done with removing all of these rollers, we can go into the garage, knock the other nuts off the other side, and then we'll go ahead and clean up all of this rust that's on these posts and on the other posts and sand them down with the 800 grit and some water and then oil them up so they're ready to receive the new rollers. All right, so I apologize for the poor lighting in advance. Um, as you can see right here still, the paint booth is still up and that's because I need to finish off this trailer before I can pull the boats out and break the paint booth down. So poor lighting and a big mess right now, but what I'm doing with this vise is opening it up so that way it's the center post is free in there and then resting the nut on it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hammer down on the nut and drive this post down. So. There you go, there's one. So we'll take these back out back and start sanding them down to get them prepped to receive the new nuts. So I've taken the liberty of already prepping one of the dowels. So if we look at the previous one, it's 
all rusty. The ends look pretty bad. It, it's dull in appearance. There's still that rusty nut on the end. And then after we sand it down and oil it up a little bit, it looks a lot shinier. There's still some surface stuff, but it's nice and smooth. So these rods are about 20 bucks a piece. So by reusing these and sanding them down a little bit, I saved myself, you know, 80 plus bucks. So definitely recommend using your rods as long as they're not pitted too bad. Getting all the rods prepped, it's not that difficult. We're just gonna try and wash any crud we can off first. Just using wet or dry 800. Now we're just gonna take some three in one oil. Smear a little bit on this rag. It doesn't need to be much. We're just doing a light coat. We'll wipe it on and then wipe all the excess off. Huh. The sounds of nature. Now we're gonna go ahead and drive a single nut cap onto one end, just like this one. And that's gonna be so that way this side already has the cap on it when we slide it through and through the roller. And then we can hammer the final nut on the other side. So to do that, no different. We're just gonna set the cap down, grab our hammer, line it up and just lightly tap. And so the biggest thing here is we don't want to bend over any of the edges on this. So, all right, so all of the 12 inch sections are ready to go. Now we'll go ahead and clean off the side posts, uh, which is going to be a little bit more work from looking at it. So in order to get all the rust off these posts, uh, before we sand it down, we're going to use just an angle grinder and a steel cut brush and that should help us remove all this built up corrosion before we come through and sand it down. Alright, that looks good. We're going to leave that there. Um, if you guys are doing this, make sure to wear pants. Got some wires in my leg. Make sure to wear pants. Brings me back to the days of making knives. Maybe we'll get back into that this summer or this winter once it cools down. Since we're gonna chop the rollers on the chop saw, I currently have a 60 tooth in it from when I was doing trim last. So we're gonna switch over to the 40 tooth. And so the 40 tooth saw blade is going to have a rougher cut, but it means that we won't heat up the polyurethane as fast. So we're gonna change the saw blade out real quick. All right. so. I've already marked the middle, so we're going to go ahead and try and line this up. And I also grabbed some V-blocks. So these are pretty small V-blocks. I thought they were going to be larger, but hopefully this does the job. So that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna wear a full face while I do this, so I'm gonna go grab that real quick before we cut this. All right, looking good. That was awesome. That worked really, really well. I'm super happy with how that worked. The key is definitely just to come down fast and hard, but 
these V-blocks ended up working really well to keep the rollers from moving on each other. And this hard um, polyurethane is, is really nice. It cuts nice. So let's go ahead and take these off and see what they look like. All right. So you can see where we stopped the first time. If we would have just gone through, it would have been pretty nice. Um, not the smoothest cut, but they look good. So we'll get the other one loaded up and go ahead and cut that. Round two, let's go. Oh yeah, those ones look really nice. So I'm super happy with how these turned out. They look really good. So these Stoltz polyurethane rollers are really nice if you need to cut to custom lengths. Let's go ahead and throw these on the trailer and we can mark out where we need to cut the studs at. So the way we're gonna measure this is by sliding the roller over, placing the cap on top, just gonna mark up a hair so that way it the cap doesn't press against the roller and the roller can rotate freely put the rollers on at this point it's a uh, fairly easy although the sail container is going to get in the way but we'll go ahead and thread the roller on and then we will put a cap on this side the sail tube makes driving the nuts onto the other side of the rod difficult because we cannot hit both sides with a hammer. All right. Here what I ended up doing is shimming the gap to put pressure onto the nut holding it in place and resisting the hammer force to drive it onto the shaft. It also helps to use a file and ensure the edges of the shaft have a chamfer as a lead in to really center the nut onto the shaft. After it was on, I came back through and used two hammers to ensure it was driven on completely. That should be good. For the side without the tube, we're just going to go ahead and use two hammers to drive the nut on. It takes a little finesse to get the nut started without falling off, but once it's on, it's pretty straightforward to just tap it on from both sides with the hammers. Finally, when installing these rollers, I noticed the crossbars were not perpendicular to the trailer, so I just used the hammer and tapped the crossbars into the correct positioning to allow loading and unloading the boat a little bit easier. 
All in all, I'm super happy with how the trailer rollers turned out. This will ensure that the new gel coat does not get scuffed up with the old black rollers. Additionally, little bonus, as you can see, generally I launch from a beachy area and these orange rollers really do catch the sun and radiate like crazy. So that made wayfinding back to the beach super easy. At first when we were sailing back in, I thought somebody was shining lights at us, but it just turned out to be the rollers. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next one.